Hello and welcome to another Miniature Addiction Club video. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I made the cafe from the Simon's Coffee Shop Miniature Kit. This kit was a present and I've never made one before, but I already know it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy watching this and if you have made this kit yourself or it is something you are thinking about doing, let me know in the comments below. So this is what the packaging looks like. It's super cute. And inside there are full colour instructions for everything you need to make. And lots of plastic bags which are all numbered so you can easily find the pieces you need for each part. It also comes with paint and glue and all of the printed paper pieces to cut out. I should probably mention at this point that I will be making a few changes to the kit along the way. Nothing major, but if you are wanting an instructional video that follows the instructions exactly, I suggest finding a different video. There are plenty of them out there, however I do hope you stick around to see how I complete my version of the coffee shop and put my own personal touches on it. I will still be showing you each step as I go and I hope it can inspire you to get a little creative if you have a kit you are working on too and to not be afraid to make alterations along the way. The first step is to prepare the walls by painting them white. They were in a separate package with all the other large wooden pieces. Once I had identified them, I went ahead and painted them using the paint provided. This paint was pretty transparent and even after three coats, it's still very patchy. I would recommend using house paint for this part, or even just covering the back of the walls with paper. However, it is important to paint the side edges of the panels and inside the window. Next, I cut out the wallpaper that was provided and glued that to the wall panels with a glue stick. As you can see here, I also painted around the edges just in case I didn't line the wallpaper up perfectly. I didn't want to see any of the MDF showing through. I'm so glad I did this as I did a terrible job of gluing the paper down. I lined it up as best as I could and smoothed it down. I put it on very wonky and I couldn't really fix it without the risk of destroying the paper, so I just had to leave it crooked. If I did this again, I would definitely use repositionable spray adhesive for this part, which gives you a bit more wiggle room. I was also left with a few bumps and creases from the glue stick. I followed the same process for the shorter wall and managed to line it up better this time.
I also painted the base as per the instructions. However, here I'm using my own acrylic paint, which has better coverage. Then I went ahead and cut out the papers for the base and glued them on as well. Once the wall panels were dry, I trimmed off the excess paper overlapping the edges with a craft knife. I did this to all the pieces so that they will line up perfectly when I come to assemble them. Then I applied the glue that was provided in the kit to the bottom of the walls and glued them in place. I also made sure to add glue where the two walls met for added support. Next, I applied small dots of glue to the surface of the window and stuck it to one of the sheets of clear plastic. The window comes with a paper component that I guess is designed to be cut out and glued on the other side of the window to cover up the glue. But I honestly couldn't be bothered cutting it out and I don't really think it needs it so long as you can apply the glue neatly. Once it was completely dry I trimmed off all the excess plastic. When I came to install the window, I noticed it didn't fit in the pre-cut opening very well. It was very loose and there were not enough edges connecting if I were to glue it as it is. So I measured the correct thickness and cut a strip of cardstock to wrap around the window and fill in the gaps. I used a piece of cardboard around 250 to 300 GSM.
I glued this all the way around the window and left it to dry completely before installing it. The cardstock worked perfectly, and as you can see, the window is nice and snug now, and there are no gaps or movement. For the next part, I decided to make some minor adjustments to the kit by spray painting these pieces a different colour. I wasn't a fan of the original teal and red colour combination, so I chose to paint mine a purpley grey colour, which is just a nice warm neutral colour. Then I went and glued more clear plastic to these panels. I couldn't figure out how to make the small sheets that were provided fit these windows, so I used my own sheets of plastic mylar. Once again, I let it dry thoroughly before trimming off the excess. Next, I made the sign for the outside of the cafe. I glued the provided pieces in place and popped out the laser cut letters. However, I'm only going to be using the words coffee. I don't know who Simon is, but I don't think he'd make very good coffee. And anyway, this is my cafe, not his. Sorry, Simon. I 
I went and painted these with a duck egg blue-green colour that I happened to have for another project. To assemble the glass walls, I glued the relevant pieces together and let it dry. I also glued on the sign I previously made, but forgot to finish filming. Then it was time to glue the window wall pieces to the rest of the structure. I think I put one of these panels in facing the wrong way, but I didn't notice until after it had dried. However, I don't think it's too noticeable. They are still a bit flimsy as they are only held together by glue, but once they are attached to the other walls, they become a lot stronger. To make sure they stay in place while the glue dries, I'm securing them with a low tack washi tape. I did the same steps for the following front wall. Once the walls were completely dry, I went ahead and glued in the supports for the floor panels.
I also glued in the edge piece which helps hold the battery for the lighting in place. I'll be showing that in more detail in the next video. Here I am applying the glue for the floor panels. I cut out the paper that came with the kit for the floor. I decided not to use this and instead I'm using some bamboo panelling to give it a more realistic floorboard look. I'm a big believer of using the same materials for miniature things. If it is ceramic in real life, ceramic miniatures look more realistic and the same goes for wood. Plastic or paper just isn't going to look as convincing. I measured and cut the bamboo sheet with a craft knife, making sure to drill a small hole in the corner, which is where some of the lighting wire will run through later on. I won't be showing it in this episode, so make sure you are subscribed and turn the bell notification on if you want to see how I attach the lighting in my next video. Now I'm ready to glue the new floor in place, and I already love how it looks. I weighed it down while it dried so it didn't lift off in any corners. Then I can go ahead and glue the baseboards in place. I painted these as well to match the other walls. They were originally dark brown and didn't match the new floor or the stone pavers. I also finished off the side of the floor edge with another strip of bamboo. The original cafe has a step between the two interior levels, but I decided not to put one in. This is how the structure of the cafe looks now, and I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. I still have to make the door and the front step down to the pavers, but I think I might make some changes to the original design, and I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do it just yet. Join me in my next video, where I will be finishing the structural part of the cafe and making some of the furniture and decorations for the interior. Thanks so much for watching, see you next time.